Hey guys, welcome back to Genshi Plans. Um, I'm recording this on baby's day 10, um, 10 days old. And today I'm also going to be recording my um, birth story, hopefully. So uh, that's not going to get out today. Obviously, this is the video you're seeing instead. Um, but I'm hoping, I'm giving a sort of non-committal kind of a promise that um, it should hopefully be ready to go live next Sunday. So um, I've already typed up like a 3000 word birth story and posted that on Reddit. So if you're like super desperate, you can probably find that. Um, but I will link it in the description of next week's video. Um, so you can read all of the gory details there as well. Um, but yeah, today uh, my toddler is actually over at her um, my in-laws house, her Lola and Lola's house, doing some baking and having some fun over there with them. So I stole her room <laughs> to record. Um, my baby's here behind me in the crib taking a little nap. And I've just been, you know, spending this week trying to recover physically. Um, like one day I'll feel so much more capable. Like yesterday I was like, you know what? I feel like I can sit on the floor and play with my daughter. Um, and I was, I was like down on the floor and I was having a good time. Most of my stitches have dissolved except for like one. Um, but then like I started to feel it again that, you know, it, I had overexerted myself by sitting on the floor. So I have to kind of balance that and be really careful. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I didn't lift my daughter from a dead, like standing up, but like, I think I helped her get up onto my lap. And I was like, wow, did she, I think she gained weight. I have to, I want to weigh her. Cause I think she's like, I don't know, more substantial than she was a couple weeks ago when I stopped um, lifting her because I was getting too pregnant. Um, and it's crazy how fast she is growing as well. Um, she is just, you know, it's just really cool to be at home to witness her growing up. Cause you know, usually during the week I'm at work and she's at the babysitter and so some of that like minutia of day-to-day -day development you kind of miss um, but she has just been like getting more articulate and more emotionally mature every single day which is an amazing privilege to watch um, the baby has been I don't know I guess waking up a little more I, it's probably developmentally good for her brain but uh, not fantastic for our sleep schedule that she's getting a little bit I don't know but less sleepy but she'll have one or two times in a 24-hour period where it's harder to get her down like last last night it was around dinner time between like 4 30 and 6 30 I think she was up no she was up to like almost 7 15 or something it was a long stretch of time where I was trying to get her to sleep had her in the swing during dinner and she was sort of drowsy but not falling asleep all the way and it wasn't until after dinner when I went to you know I, I swaddled her and I nursed her in the bedroom that she finally fell asleep for her first chunk of the night um the night before that her chunk that she was awake was from like 2 to 4 30 in the morning that was very frustrating um we're not doing shifts yet because that was something that we did with Agnes. Agnes would take a syringe pretty well um, and like we're, we don't have an issue with pacifiers because my understanding from reading Crib Sheet by Emily Oster um, was that the pacifiers really aren't the issue when it comes to nipple confusion because like they're not getting milk from a pacifier so they can tell the difference um, but uh, we haven't introduced bottles just yet. She's only 10 days old. I'm thinking tonight we might try bottles for the first time to see if we can do like a chunk system where like I sleep from eight or nine till midnight or one and then we switch um so we'll see but so far like last night wasn't too bad she was able to settle back down pretty quickly after being fed and stuff can you see I'm still scratching here um that is still going on the pup's rash has pretty much disappeared um there's a couple little spots that are still a little bit raised and yucky but like if you remember before it was all red and stuff, um, that's all gone. And on my tummy is also, like I've got the stretch marks and they're a little bit purple, but they're not like swollen. Anyway, but I'm still getting itching like on and off uh, once, you know, a couple times a day. And I probably should just take another bath or another shower with the pine tar soap. That has been helping. I've just been taking Claritin during the day and then showering with pine tar soap every so often. Um, and that has been holding it at bay more or less. 
I'm hoping that it will go away very soon. Everything I heard said that by two weeks, the chances were good that it would be gone. So that gives me until Wednesday-ish. Um, other things said as far as, you know, two to four weeks postpartum. So we'll see. It's just sort of annoying. It's not actively distracting and infuriating and ridiculous. Like I'm not sleeping with ice packs anymore. Um, but it is kind of annoying when like right now my legs are kind of bugging me. <laughs> I think I might actually shave my legs later. I, I clipped my toenails for the first time today. My first time in like probably three months or something like that. I had my husband do it once for me and he didn't do it the way I would have done it. <laughs> we have different toenail anatomy and so he clips his a different way and has to worry about like ingrowns and stuff. Like mine just curve a different direction. So I clip mine differently and so I'm like, eh, I just want to do it myself. Um, so I just put it off and put it off until today and it was a big pile of gross toenail clippings and I felt so satisfied. They're now shorter. Um, <laughs> so I'm able to like bend and stuff and it's crazy that it doesn't feel weird, the fact that I can like, you know, pull my knees up and like have room and I, I was thinking that uh, pregnancy might actually break me of my habit of crossing my legs all the time when I sit uh, because I know that's not ideal for my back. Um, but it hasn't, I've gone straight back to crossing my legs all the time. So that's, you know, I guess I'm feeling more uh, myself in my body. So that's nice. Um, yeah, I'm still having some, some twinges, you know, bleeding go, comes and goes and that's fun. Um, but it's just kind of manageable. And now that the, uh, most of the stitches have dissolved, it's just a lot more comfortable because there's not like that pulling sensation. Um, I guess I didn't really talk about it, but in next week's video, you'll, I will mention that I, I got just some first degree tearing. Um, so I'm not too worried about it healing. Um, but I'm still just, you know, taking care of it as I can. I haven't taken ibuprofen since maybe yesterday morning and it hasn't been too bad. I'm kind of, kind of taking it as needed now. I've lowered my dose down from 600 to 400, I think, just as needed. Um, Cause you know, don't want to overdo it. Bridget has been doing great with her nursing. Um, yeah, her latch has always been great. I haven't had to use any lanolin or nipple butter or the soothies that I have in the fridge or any of that um, because, yeah, I was able to avoid having a lot of those chap nipple issues. But one thing that's weird, uh, last time with Agnes, um, my left side only for the first, I, I looked it up because I had notes somewhere, three weeks. Um, the first three weeks of our breastfeeding relationship, when she would latch on my left side, it would be excruciatingly painful. The same similar kind of pain as to when you have a shallow latch, but her latch was fine. Um, and it would last maybe 30 seconds at most, and then it would be fine for the rest of the feed. And I thought that was, well, a weird fluke thing that like I talked to the lactation consultant, she said, yeah, that can happen. No one tells you about that. Everyone always says, if it hurts, you're doing it wrong. There was nothing I was doing wrong. My nipple was fine. It just hurt, but only for three weeks. Um, I thought that that was just like, okay, now your left boob knows what it's doing. It's fine, um, but it's actually doing that again this time. So I'm just sort of keeping that three week window in mind and hoping that it's similar this time. Um, and I just know that like, first you, you brace yourself, you latch on, you wince, you take a deep breath and pray a memorare and then it's over. <laughs> um, but for whatever reason, Lefty has usually been the underproducer, but this time has been like getting engorged and leaky more quickly. Um, the Haka has been amazing. I didn't have it for the first couple weeks, I think with Agnes, it, I didn't order it right away. Um, and I didn't know about it until like after she was born. So I missed out on a lot of that golden window of like as your milk's coming in. Um, and so this time I had it beforehand. I made sure to have it ready to go. Um, and so when milk came in on like day three, it was on Saturday. She was born Wednesday evening. It came, milk came in over the course of the day on Saturday. It was getting more and more just engorged. And so I pulled out the haka started using it then and I've been getting just like I've got a freezer stash already um, I've just been bagging it and freezing it because we're not using bottles yet um, and so I've been using it mostly now just overnight or if she's been taking a long nap and I just feel engorged on whatever side I'll pop it on um, just on the opposite side I'm feeding on 
once or twice I've used it to relieve some um, painful engorgement when she's asleep, um, like overnight or whatever. And yeah, I've just been sort of slowly building up a nice little bit of a freezer stash um, without having to do any pumping yet, which is good. It does it does trigger like a letdown. Like I've I've learned that I need to latch her first. One time I was like, I'll just get the haka situated and then I'll put her on, but the haka triggered the letdown on this side and then this side started to leak before she could get in place. So um, it does actually stimulate something, but I think it's just, it's more gentle than using a pump. And honestly, I'd rather have, I'd rather err on the side of oversupply than undersupply, especially given my history with pumping with my first daughter. Um, it was just never enough. It was never as efficient as her nursing. And I didn't have the patience to be like hands-on pumping, I probably should have been, or hand expressing or whatever. Um, I tried doing some power pumping for like a week and that worked temporarily. But whatever the case, once she was um, at the babysitter like full time, uh, I couldn't keep up and eventually we had to supplement with formula when she was with the sitter. And then I stopped pumping at 11 months because it wasn't worth it anymore. I was getting like half an ounce throughout the entire day. And then that caused my supply to tank even more. And then eventually she ended up weaning herself by 13 months, I think because it was just too frustrating for her because she would mostly like nurse in the morning and we started just offering her the option of a cup of milk instead. And she was like, yeah, let's do that. And then one day she just realized I hadn't nursed her in a while. So 13 months is still pretty decent even if it's supplemented and we didn't have to supplement until after six months so that's good too we didn't have to deal with like figuring out if formula poop needs to be sprayed or whatever we had a diaper sprayer this time my parents got us a diaper sprayer and it has an adjustable nozzle so it can work as a bidet and it has been great because i have been freed from the burden of having to fill a peri bottle um so that's nice uh, yeah, big sister's doing really good with the transition. The first few days she was like really manic and like laughing loudly and making a lot of noise. And I think it was just her way of sort of emotionally coping with the change. It was really interesting to see because she stayed positive throughout. Like she never has complained about Bridget, but I, she has probably unconsciously, um, been a little bit more out there a little bit more not even like needy but like attention seeking I guess that was like her first reaction when she saw the baby was to go ha 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 like a fake laugh which is really interesting so I just have been trying to like focus on her when I can when I have that one-on-one -on -one time um you know some some snuggle time in bed or we went to get groceries last or on Monday um went out to get some lemonade on the way home and just you know a little bit of mommy mommy daughter time um, but she, I think, is, is adjusting better. It's become more normal. We've, you know, bedtime is different um, because, well, for one thing, I, I can't, you know, lift her on and off the potty. So dad's been taking um, most of the potty times because I'm not supposed to be lifting anything heavier than the baby for a few weeks because um, that does trigger more bleeding. Um, and just stuff like that. She's had to learn to be a little bit more independent but she's also doing amazing with like being a big helper in her family and uh, you know cleaning up the toys that she has lying around and stuff like that we're trying to reinforce those habits and it has been pretty good um, there are some meltdowns but not as many as I would have expected and people always talk about like a regression she hasn't well she hasn't had really accidents during the day more than usual. Um, overnight, we still have her in a pull-up so that we don't have to worry about, you know, the guilt of an accident overnight, like whatever, your body does what it does. That's a different beast. Um, so yeah, she hasn't regressed in, in potty training. She hasn't regressed in, I don't know, really anything. She's, she's amazing. I always knew she would be. Like every single challenge we've ever thrown at her, she has taken on and just done great with the exception of like Gino keeps trying to bribe her with um, toys and stuff if she can learn how to pull up her own pants and she's like nah so that's just funny but yeah she's doing really well she um, she still wants to try to you know hold the baby every so often but she gets tired of it eventually um, 
but she's she's being understanding and and I appreciate that. We're also doing our best to have Bridget sleep a nap on her own in either the, the you know, well, she's not usually in the crib here, the bassinet in our room, or we have a little portable one in the living room. Um, and so I'm hoping that like the more naps that she has lying by herself, um, the less she'll need <laughs> me 24 hours a day, especially while she's sleeping so much, I can give more attention to Agnes if Bridget is lying somewhere safe. So that's uh, what we're trying to do. Also, oh yeah, Bridget is doing tummy time amazingly. Um, Agnes always hated it after a couple seconds, but Bridget so far, so far has been really good about it. Um, almost enjoying it and just kind of chilling and lasting like five minutes at least before she starts getting a little bit fussy. So that's just, I think that's it. It's like, it's a ramble of the first 10 days or so of child development on I know I talk about my toddler just as much as I talk about my newborn because, I don't know, she's up to is probably more interesting. <laughs> but I'm, I'm so proud of both of them. So that is what I've been up to. Um, if you watch this whole thing because you're like interested in my life and stuff, like that's cool, awesome. Subscribe if you're not already, obviously ring the bell. And um, yeah, like I said, next Sunday should be the birth uh, story video, which I'm about to start filming as soon as I turn this camera off. Um, and then Thursdays is my planner update. So you'll get to see like what my weekly looked like this week um, and for next week as well. So that is what's going on. See you in the next one. Bye.